Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to talk about Intel and I've done quite a few videos on Intel on my channel, but I've never been willing to buy into the stock, at least not to date. Well, today in this video, I'm gonna give you exactly the buy price I would be willing to pay for Intel stock. Now, the Intel stock has been down about 40% year to date. In fact, it's trading around $30 today. We would have to go all the way back to the beginning of 2016, so about six and a half years ago, to get to the same stock price. Now, there was a good period of time where the stock traded around 25 to $35 for several years. Now, we did see it get up to $55 this year, and obviously it has gone down from there. And a big reason why I have not bought Intel is I really feel that the industry is complicated. I am not a tech guy by any means. For me to use a, a microphone and a camera in front of me, uh, it took me a while to kind of figure things out that doesn't come natural to me. Uh, my background is in accounting and finance. I'm not really much of a tech person. So when I dig into Intel and I've read their a couple of their 10Ks, listened to their earnings calls, done all that stuff, uh, I just found the industry just difficult in general. Not only that, but when I look at their competitors, specifically AMD, it's a bit confusing on why AMD has really taken over the, the market share for uh, CPUs. Now, AMD, I gotta be honest, when I looked into AMD originally, uh, about a year or so ago, I thought AMD was a new company. <laughs> but interestingly enough, Intel and AMD have been around about the same amount of time, which was just uh, an astonishment to me. Intel started back in 1968, where AMD started just a year later in 1969. So these two companies have been competing against each other for over 50 years. Now, AMD stepped it up in 2017, and they came up with the Ryzen microprocessor, which really uh, competed heavily against Intel chips, and they were able to offer chips at a discounted price for their uh, customers, and so customers were going from Intel to AMD chips. We go back, you know, back in 2019, AMD owned about 20% of the space, and now it's almost 50% of that space and Intel uh, market share in the CPU arena has been diminishing year over year since 2017. So for me, it's hard to look at and figure out, okay, how is Intel going to compete against AMD and try to uh, stay ahead of them in that space? Because they certainly have not been able to over the last five years. Now, that doesn't mean I'm staying away from semiconductors or even stocks that are in the chip industry. In fact, I own a company called Micron, ticker symbol MU, and I felt that industry was easier to understand. Now, it took me about nine months to get my head wrapped around that, where I've looked at Intel for probably a year and a half, two years, and I still can't fully wrap my head around it, but I felt Micron was just easier to understand because they're an oligopoly, and there's only two other major competitors to them, and they're not in the United States, they're in South Korea. In fact, Micron is the only DRAM producer in the United States. And I just felt it was easier to understand that industry where Intel was a little more difficult for me. Now to say all that, you know, Intel is still a good company. I would not say it's a bad company. However, they are going through some headwinds and you can see that in their financials. In fact, you know, just this past quarter alone, the revenues significantly declined by about 20%. Their gross margins really got suppressed all the way down to the mid 30% where they were around 48 to 51%. So that is significant and their free cash flow year over year has gone down about 46%, which we'll talk about more um, in a little bit here. So these are all really, really big concerns. Now, just so we go back just two quarters back in Q1 of 2022, management has been saying that they're going to get in the mid to high single digits for you know revenue growth in 2023. In fact, they're going to be up in that 10 to 12% range in 2025 to 2026. But we've seen obviously a big pullback in revenue this past year. A lot of that has to do with the economy and just the headwinds in general for semiconductors. And you look at other companies in uh, the chip space. You look at NVIDIA, you look at AMD, 
I mean, they're they're really hurting. In fact, we just got news just in the last week or two where uh, the U.S. is forbidding uh, NVIDIA actually sell their chips to China, which is going to hurt them. So we've seen just a, a big uh, suppression in stock prices across the board for chip makers. And kudos to management of Intel. They did come out in the last quarter and they said, you know, this is on us. We didn't manage, we did not manage the quarter very well. We did not manage our inventory. And that really hurt us on the top line and the bottom line. Now, their balance sheet is still very strong. If you look at their cash and short-term investments, it's around $27 billion and their total debt is around $38 billion. Now, if you look at working capital, which is current assets minus current liabilities, that is around $30 billion, three zero. That is incredible. So they still have a very, very solid balance sheet even though we've seen their, their revenues drop this past year and they've been on a slow decline over the last few years, but they still produce a lot of free cash flow. They produced around $11 billion in free cash flow over the last year. But again, their free cash flow yield has gone from 10% down to 5%, which does scare the market and investors in general. Now, with Intel, I think there are some X factors with them, and there's really three or four different factors that really can help the company and really turn around the stock price. And, and the first one is their CapEx spending. Now, they're spending a ton of money on capital expenditures. That is why their free cash flow yield has gone from 10% down to 5%. That is why their free cash flow has dropped 46% year over year. So they're putting a ton of money back into the business. They're talking about building two new factories in Albany, and it's going to be about a hundred billion dollar investment when they're all said and done. Last year, they committed $20 billion, but a hundred billion dollars in total, what's going to cost to get those going. They've announced they're putting a mega factory in Germany, and there's a, a CHIPS Act, which we'll talk about here in the United States here in a second, but there's also one in Europe, and they're trying to get subsidies from that to put into their Europe locations as well. Now, speaking of the CHIPS Act, it was signed in the United States. It was passed by Congress in 2017, signed into action by President Biden in, two, in August 2022. Now, there's different numbers I've been looking at, but the total CHIPS Act is around $280 billion, but I've seen anywhere from $50 to $100 billion potentially going to chip companies, including Intel. Now, there's $54 billion in direct subsidies and around $24 billion in tax credits that these companies could reap from this CHIPS Act. And the reason why the United States has passed this act is kind of the same reasons why they shut off NVIDIA from selling to China. We're trying to stay ahead technology-wise from China. So by pumping extra money into the economy and specifically these chip makers, trying to give them extra money to try to come up with the next technology for their chip making, that can stay ahead of China, as China has been gaining a lot of ground over the last several years. Now, from what I read, Intel and other chip makers could get up to $3 billion per fab that they create. However, it could be years before a lot of these chip makers actually see the money from this CHIPS Act. So it could be a while before investors also see an appreciation from stock price from this specific act. Now, something else that we should talk about that I think has been flying under the radar is an acquisition that Intel made of Tower Semiconductor earlier this year. This gives them direct access to the foundry services. So this is something that Intel is putting a lot of money into that we just talked about. By buying Tower Semiconductor, they're getting you know a customer base and then seeing how that company is run. And I think we'll give them a good foundation and foothold going into the future for their foundry services. Another thing we should talk about too is Mobileye. So Mobileye is a company that Intel bought a few years ago. They make chips for autonomous vehicles. In fact, if you look at the different segments within uh, Intel, I mean, that segment of their business, Mobileye, is supposed to grow the most, up to like 40% per year on the top line. Now, they've talked about actually spinning that company off away from Intel, and they, th they thought about doing that last year in 2021 and possibly having the IPO be worth around $50 billion. 
dollars, if I remember correctly, Intel paid around ten billion dollars for Mobileye a few years ago. So that'd be a four to five x uh, type of investment back for Intel if they were able to do that. Now with the market pulling back drastically over the last you know several months, it does not make sense for them to do an IPO right now. But I think that's in the back pocket of of, of Intel at some point. That could generate a lot of shareholder value if they were able to generate, you know, 40 or $50 billion from that type of sale. Another thing to talk about is their dividend yield. It's right now around 4.6% as I make this video. The stock price is around $30 a share, and there's a lot of discussion. Is that yield safe or not? Well, it kind of depends. So Intel's paid around $5.8 billion dollars over the last trailing 12 months for dividends. So they've also had to uh, reduce their CapEx spending. So they were expected around $30 billion of CapEx. They've moved that all the way down to uh, low 20s. It could go down even farther than that. So that really depends. If, if they hold to their CapEx and they continue to decline throughout the year, then they would probably have to pull back on their dividend. But my guess is they'll probably pull back more on capital expenditures than taken away from their dividend because that would probably hurt their stock price uh, more than pulling back on CapEx, which to me is probably the wrong way to look at it because I think management should be putting a lot of money into the capital expenditures because that is the long-term growth for the company. That's their bread and butter in the long term. And by them not possibly, you know, taking or reducing back their dividend yield, they're sacrificing their long-term for their short, short term. So I don't think they're going to drop their, their dividend, but they could. If they're going to decline, like I said, for revenue and profits going into the future, like we've seen over the last you know quarter or two, they and they keep their CapEx the same, that, that could be a potential problem. You know, another thing is, is management, and I've said this numerous times, I think the management team is the right one for Intel. In fact, I think they have a very, very strong management team in Patrick Gelsinger and Zinzer, who came from Micron. I was really sad to see him uh, move away from Micron personally as being a shareholder there. And I don't think there's anyone else that could be running the company that could do really any better bringing Intel into the next phase, but they have to execute. And there's just a lot of things on the table for them. So you know, what would I buy Intel at today? That's what this whole video is about. Well, uh, for me, how I look at the business and how I value the business and what I'd be willing to pay for the business is really, I got to really take away the foundry services, all the CapEx are spending and look at just the core business of Intel. What is it worth today. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is project out sales and operating income in the future and then discount it back today on what I think the market would be willing to pay for this company several years out in the future. So if we do that now, I think sales for this year is going to be $65 billion. That is a almost a 12 to 13% drop year over year. I just think it's going to be a really, really bad year for Intel. And then I think they're going to pick up to get about $70 billion next year. That might sound like a lot, but that is not even getting back close to where they were even a year ago at $76 billion. In fact, I don't think they're going to get back to over $76 billion until 2025. So you're talking three years out. I'm being extremely conservative right here. So if we look at 10 years out, I think they're going to be around $106 billion in revenue. So on a compounded annual growth rate, I think it's about 6% per year on the top line. This is, again, their core business. Now, as far as operating margins go, I think it's going to stabilize around 30%. We go back to 2019, for example, they're around 30%. I think that's just kind of their normal core business itself. So based on the information, I think the stock price 10 years from now is around $78. We discount that back today on a multiple of 10. And the reason why I'm using a 10 is that they're only growing 6% on the top line. So I don't think the market is going to be willing to pay very much for a company in this scenario. And keep in mind, again, if they're not going to get back to $76 billion of revenue until three years out, again, that's why I think the multiple would be around a 10. So a discount rate at 10%, I get around $30 a share for this business. And that again is their core business. So 
would that would I be willing to pay for Intel at thirty dollars? I would not because that would be absolutely no margin of safety. Again. I'm looking at it as basically the foundry services aren't going to work. They're going to be putting a ton of money back into the company. They're not able to, uh, you know, spin off Mobileye. A lot of things they're hoping to do that they're uh, promising. They're even promising gross margins three years out from now in the 56 to 58 percent range. But those are just promises. We don't know if they're actually going to execute. So. I need some margin of safety, so I would have to wait until the price is under $25 a share for me to be interested in this stock. Even if they're paying 4% dividend, it doesn't matter. To me, it's got to be under $25 a share. That gives me around a 15% discount rate on their core business. So that's why I'd be willing to pay under $25. But I would love to hear from you guys. I mean, what do you think about my valuation, my analysis of Intel. Do you think it's a buy now at $30? Uh, do you think it was a buy at, at $50 earlier this year? Do you think it, it's not a buy at all? Would you stay away from them? I'd love to hear from you in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you on the other side. Take care and, and God bless.